So I'm a 90 grad of, of Clayton High School, 94 grad of uh, University of Pennsylvania, played tight end. It is absolutely a sense of brotherhood. There's something to be said for uh, anytime you work hard together towards a common goal. You know, Misery loves company, and when it's day in and day out, I mean, it's a it's a great thing as well. But you know, kind of when you're forced through good times and bad together, it creates a bond that, at least in my lifetime, I've found like no other. It's my second family. I'm not closer with anybody else than my team. Like, I got their back, they got my back. Well, I just came off of the I know. Yeah, like, yeah, like, yeah. What so, that feel like? It was awful when it first happened. But I also didn't really know what was going on. I tried to get back in, but Chris wanted to let me. Other than that, like, you know, it, it, I fell behind in school. And so I'm still trying to catch up with that. Do you think, like, the fear of impossible would ever like, stop playing for her? Never. Unless I, unless I go brain dead, uh, I'm still in for the game. We're never going to be able to eliminate all, you know, contact in football. Like I said earlier, it's, it's a violent sport and, and will continue to be that way. But I think we can manage that information that we have and make better determinations on whether someone does have a potential concussion or needs to be checked out further before they're allowed to, to return to the field. So I'm one of the team physicians for Washington University Athletes. I used to work with the St. Louis Rams for 11 years and was their concussion doctor for them. Hits that don't produce a concussion are what sometimes people refer to as a sub-concussive blow. So it didn't make a concussion happen. Is that as concerning or is that as worrisome? So people have different theories about that as far as whether or not that makes a difference. Obviously, repetitive damage to anything or repetitive trauma to everything or anything in our body can be a problem, but obviously our bodies are able to withstand a lot of things. So, so you know, people have proposed that repetitive sub-concussive blows, the ones that don't produce concussions, actually may be more harmful to people than the actual concussion, which is the end result of a really bad blow. Um, but, but again, we still don't know, you know, how many of those are a problem, are they truly a problem, so. We know if you've had one concussion, you're three times more likely to get a second and eight times more likely to get a third. And that was done in a longitudinal study at the Mayo Clinic years ago by Anikers. But we don't know if you have multiple tiny, tiny injuries. Does that add up or is it just concussions that add up? And we aren't really sure. Um, but we recommend if you've had multiple concussions, you stay away from contact sports because people like Muhammad Ali have proven that if you get hit enough times and concussed enough times, you have permanent brain damage. The problem is the brain is rotating within the skull and it's probably the sheer forces when your brain twists and turns that really makes a difference rather than the blow to the helmet which is what you're measuring with your accelerometers. You know we're, we're really excited about the technology that's available now through uh, Riddell Insight helmets. They're basically inserts that go into the helmet to help us monitor a little bit more closely um, blows to the to the helmet. When a blow reaches a certain level uh, of impact that we we are aware of it now and, and if somebody needs to be checked out our trainer has that information immediately, our coaches have that information so uh, we felt like it was an important factor to keep our kids as safe as possible and that, that's our goal. You know football is a violent sport and uh, we just want to be proactive in doing what we can to to maintain as high safety level as we can. So we've been using the Rydell helmets for a while and then their salesperson came up to us and asked if we wanted to start using the um, Insight tool, which basically has the sensors in it where it detects the amount of hits that the helmet endures during practices and games. You know, giving the, the parents a sense of security, it, you know, like I tell, like I said before, you know, it's not a cure-all thing as far as concussions or anything like that, but it does show me uh, the amount of impacts a player is, is getting, you know, and if he's 
If I have a player that's getting way too many impacts, I can pull him to the side, you know, and try to correct the way he's either tackling or anything like that. So um, it's helped out a lot so far. So I'm familiar with accelerometer hats. I, I would not routinely recommend them at this point because the consumer grade, so what someone can buy currently and use, um, to me are really not ready for prime time. So, so when we talk about is that going to help us diagnose a concussion, we'll, we'll know for lots of reasons. When we talk about that as far as playing chance, well sure, there's a chance that someone can go out there and they could have a really serious injury to their chest and they can die from that. Or there's an in, a risk that they um, tear their ACL and maybe never get back to sports. So one of the ligaments in their knee or break a bone really bad. So there's, there's a chance with everything that we do in life. I'm using it as an evaluation tool um, and helping determine uh, if the player needs to be checked out after the impact or not. So there's actually some very sophisticated uh, monitors that they've used for research for concussions that they've put into helmets to determine is there a certain g-force as an example that a hit happens that causes a concussion mm -hmm. and they've looked at this in younger kids middle school high school college professional athletes the problem is is that there's not a, a, a level of a g-force that a concussion occurs at so they can occur at small levels or high levels or sometimes you get a high g-force and it doesn't produce a concussion so so they really don't help us very much and I tell everybody really they're probably more utilized in a research setting than they are to help someone on the field right now and probably extra expense that schools don't need to make. Uh, football, football was was my avenue out of my situation. I said I was raised by my dad. He was in the military, single parent, you know, so I was actually born in the Philippines. My mother's Filipino, so as soon as I came to America, uh, you know, and my mom and dad got divorced and all that, so I stayed with my dad, stayed with football, uh, and then uh, got a scholarship at Miami, Ohio, played there for two years, transferred to SIU Carbondale. Uh, but like I said, football was my way out. You know, I got my degree. Um, and all that, so I'm thankful for everything this football given to me. You know, the football team's been a really cool and important part of my life, you know. Um, spending hours in the gym preparing for the football season, um, blocking out my summer and vacation so that I can be there for football, and, um, you know, just having it as an opportunity for the next four years for college, it's made it a pretty important part of my life. The sport has always had concussions I think it's just more that we're bringing it to light now more with research involving CTE and like long-term brain damage but um I mean the concussions really it, I, it definitely deters people I think from doing it but I don't know I think for me like when my parents watched my younger sister get two concussions playing uh, basketball at the age of 12 and having me only get a minor concussion playing football you know, they just sort of realize that it happens in sports, and so it's more important to take necessary safety precautions, you know, before and after games and during games to try to avoid those kinds of things as much as possible. Also with that, I think it brings our most diverse group in our diverse program in the, probably the school, together. Um, so it's when you have that and you have one another looking out for each other so much in a sport like that, it just brings that bond and it brings so many different demographical groups and so many different walks of life together to a family type environment, which is tremendous for our kids. And you know, when you start having things like that, the academic success and then the social success of, of everybody involved, it, it truly is something special. I I can't control what parents decide to do. I can't control, you know, like I said, it's a sport that is a very contact, violent sport. You know, things happen and, you know, I, I, I feel for the player that, that can't play anymore and I feel for that person that does have issues. Uh, um, but, I mean, I can't control that. So, therefore, I can't really dwell on something that I can't control. I hated every second of it at the very beginning. I'm going to be honest with you, at the very beginning. But as time went on, it kind of grew on me. So the players my freshman year, they were really nice. They made me feel like I belong there, which didn't really happen much before. So up until, well, at that point, I just realized 
you know, maybe I should pursue football more than the rest is history, I guess. My oldest son is on the cross country team and there's a lot of team camaraderie and bonding that goes on there. So I don't think it's unique to football and I wouldn't say that football is the end all be all to be able to experience that. Well, I think that there's a risk of injury in any sport you play so you're never going to be able to completely take that away. We certainly have a, a uh, section of our student population that's interested in playing football and our philosophy has been that we want to give kids opportunities to, to participate. Uh, our athletic program is you know pretty wide-ranging and, and encompasses a lot of different sports and football is one of those that we support and we think that there's a value to participation beyond just winning and losing. I think the the things that you're able to learn through athletics, football or any other sport is is a very valuable tool and can't be learned anywhere else. So, so we think it's a very important part of the educational process in support of what we're doing in the classroom. And because of that, um, we, we try to support it to, to the best of our ability. I mean, it doesn't concern me. I mean, it's just kind of like, it's football. It's like trying to make a gunfight say, you know, it's, it's, it's gonna happen, you know, things are gonna happen. It's just about being safe, good form, good technique. That's one thing they stressed about us. You know, don't use your helmet as a weapon. Don't right. dive in head first, tackle with your shoulder, good form. You know, it's just simple things you can do that will really go a long way to longevity of your career. Do you remember what Boink used to say? <laughs> see what you hit, hit what you see. You know, like I said before, uh, it's part of our animal, it's like part of our raw instinct, you know. Ever since hunter gatherers and human nature, we've always been prone to fight and violence and war. This is football is basically almost simulated war. There's a saying out there that you know, athletics don't necessarily just build character, they reveal it. And I think that's so true with football because of all the unique aspects in which it brings to the table. You know, the honestly, the best thing that we can do is have a very upfront, honest, honest dialogue. Um, and that starts with the relationships. The better relationships we have with our student athletes and with our coaches, the more trust there is. The more trust when we have that conversation and there's a play or there's something going on, to get that honest and true feedback from a student athlete is really the front line of defense. Yeah, some kids never return to normal. Some adults, same thing. I mean, it's you've got a better chance of returning to normal if you're a kid than if you're an adult, but concussions are a bad thing. Well, personally for me, football, is, I would say, is at the forefront of one of like the most important changes in my life. Freshman year, I was doing significantly worse in school. I really didn't have a structured life. It was just coming home after school, you know, I'd play video games, I would talk to friends, and there really wasn't any structure. I didn't focus on school. And then um, one day, Mr. Gladstone told me and asked me if, he wanted to, if I wanted to play football, and um, said I did but my mom wouldn't let me play until I got my grades together. And um, after that, you know, I had a complete change in grades, a complete change in motivation, started going to the gym a lot. And, um, you know, I really just strived to, you know, and I wanted to play at the next level. I wanted to do something and football sort of gave me some motivation with that. So I guess that's why I play football and I feel like football can bring that for other people.